welcome back to the channel. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to um, uh, look at these sorts of parametric objects uh, using Graph Mapper tool in Grasshopper. Uh, it's going to be um, like a beginner, intermediate level uh, tutorial, and I'm uh, and I will try to do it in two parts. Uh, in the first part, you're going to look at the kind of overall semantics of building something like this, the type of relationships we need uh, using the Graph Mapper. And in the second part, um, I'm going to kind of look at how we can um, uh, add more definition or control uh, to the surfacing of these objects. You can see that um, the profiles are somehow changing here. Um, and we're going to look at this sort of zigzagging functions so that we have uh, these sorts of shiny objects and control uh, the parametric behavior of them. So um, let's jump right into it. Um, these are actually the forms without the environment map. Um, I'm going to work in uh, wireframe mode and we're going to start from scratch. So let's build it quickly. Um, we are going to work with uh, points that are uh, distributed in the z-axis. So we need a series of them. So I'm going to determine uh, 12 points let's say they're in trouble um, actually let's make it 25 we want the stepping size to be 25 and i want to place a plane in each of these points an xy plane and a circle to begin with so this is our basic construction and let's say our radius value um, for these shapes to be 50 and we're going to just loft them so this is uh, the basic cylindrical construction that we can get uh, with using only single parameter values. Now I want to change this radius value with graph mapper and we're going to use graph mapper here and let's start with a linear function so that we can understand how this works and I'm going to connect a range here and um, this range tool actually gives us um, 13 values because we are supplying 12. Uh, it needs to match the total number of points, which is 12. So I need to write a simple expression here, uh, x minus one. And when you supply this, this will actually give us uh, the right amount of values. And if I multiply these with the, with the radius coefficient, this will control the radius values of the circle. So now you can see um, this is kind of controlling the overall radius value and this is controlling the behavior of the profile. So we are, we are dealing with a conic profile, but we can change it to be a Bezier. Uh, let's say we wanna work with something like this, like a conic shape. And we can also increase the radius value a bit more. So that's looking like a vase or a cup. Okay, uh, so we have created this that controls radius value. So let's rename this to be radius, the total uh, value for our radiuses. And um, we can actually build the rotation now, but what I want to do is uh, actually show you how we can build the profiles before we get into the radius. So I'm going to disable the loft and extract the curves here and uh, what I want to do is divide these curves into a number of points let's say we want to work with 36 points and I want to sp spread them into two lists uh, using this patch uh, now this patch takes in a true false pattern uh, which basically goes through the list and if the value hits true it uh, moves it to a if the value it's false it moves it to B so it's kind of like a binary um, filtering of this data uh, since we have 36 uh, values the filtering gives us 18 values in A and B the points in A are going to stay where they are but the points in B we're going to move them towards these centers uh, of each circle so those centers are located here uh, basically we can get it through the centroid of the curves of the uh, of the circles uh, but one problem we have here is that um, the areas are in a single list whereas we have multiple lists here because we have multiple points. 
So um, we need to actually do this operation to all of these circles individually. And one way of achieving it is by grafting this. So if you right click here and graft it, now um, the matching or the scaling would actually correlate uh, because the data in the area uh, is also grafted. So now um, I'm going to scale down these points to these centroids and let's say we want to have 0.85 as our coefficient. So this is how much we want to move them inward. Um, now we have to redefine the profile uh, because we have adjusted these points. So we have to leave back the data together. We haven't changed points A, but we have changed points B. And now they're back in order. So we, we got the same division, but we have manipulated point B. And I'm going to do uh, a polyline going through each of these lists of points. Uh, and you can see here that the the points are not closed because um, this actually runs like a single list going in one direction. But if you want to close uh, the list, you can right click here and do um, true and that will create a closed polyline. So it will connect the first and the last point. Now we have 12 new profiles. So what I want to do is um, flatten this list and loft it. And that's basically the primary construction that I wanted to achieve. So this is um, the profiled version of our um, parametric shape. Uh, so if I bake this, you can basically see uh, the simple construction with no rotation yet. Um, but in the second part of this tutorial, we're actually going to build um, the rotation for this object so that um, we can have more control over the surface behavior as much as how we want each profile to shift.